Welcome to Yoga Biz Camp with myself, Michael J. I'm a yoga business coach with 25 plus years of experience as a creative, a total tech geek, and a yoga business owner. Today I'm super excited to have Laura Moncombe from Walla Software. Laura has launched this new platform for managing studios and she's got a really unique approach. Enjoy the interview. Welcome to another episode of Yoga Biz Camp. I'm super excited to have Laura Moncombe with me today. Laura, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. I am just going to read your bio and then we'll go from there. I'm super excited okay. to talk to you about all <laughs> the of formal, the formal bit. bio. Yeah, Let's yeah. get it the out form- of the way. I will say it's a weird thing to hear it read back to you, but uh, Laura Moncombe is the president and co-founder of Walla, uh, a new studio management platform for the next generation of fitness studios. She lives and works by the motto that happiness is the highest form of health. Love that. Her experience consulting for hundreds of studios around the world, along with managing a studio and teaching yoga for over 12 years, gave her a first-hand glimpse into the challenges and opportunities of running a boutique studio. This led her to partner up with some of the best tech minds in the industry to build Walla. Laura's a competitor, mom of two, yoga and Pilates junkie, and fan of anything that results in a good belly laugh. Most of all, she (laughs) loves building communities around her passion to get more people moving. Yeah, that's a yeah. mouthful. You just did it without. It is a, it is a mouthful. And, you know, when I'm reading that, it's like I have you and I have so many common paths, really, oh, to, you know, amazing. you've kind of, um, but, you know, both yoga teachers, both ran at studios, um, mm. building community. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in there that uh, I think, well, a lot of us in the yoga world have a lot of those similar sort of passions yep. as well. But uh, yeah, a lot of it sounds like my path. Um, so welcome. I am, I'm just going to preface this with how we sort of met, which was over a yeah. year ago when your software was, I think, an idea and you were just, <laughs> you were just starting to get uh, people putting it together. And you and I, I, we crossed our paths. I think I was doing the Yoga Alliance Business of Yoga webinars at that time. Yep, exactly. And, uh, and uh, came across you and your concept was completely different to anything else that I think anybody is doing. And if I can mm-hmm. just sort of jump in with that, because um, there's a lot of new softwares come out in the last year and a half, two years. Like there's just a lot out there right now. The market's pretty saturated, but you've taken a very different approach, which is about the psychology of the consumer. Mm -hmm. So I want to get into that a little bit. And so I'm super intrigued about that. But before we get there, I want to hear your steps to where you are now and uh, kind of the, the shoes that you've been in, because I think a lot of studio owners will relate to your path. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know it's kind of fun to look back and be like, gosh, that's why that turn was there for me, you know? Um, Sure. So I first started teaching yoga when I was, I think, 24, maybe 23, and just really had fallen in love with the practice. I was a college athlete and had injuries. And so I kind of found yoga as a, um, a healing practice but also a competitive practice because I was, you know, I was a competitor and I just loved any way to move, but yoga just felt different. It didn't feel like I had to look around the room all the time. And that I was like, you know, trying to get another rep in, I was just able to, to, you know, dive into my body, into my breath. And actually, I don't know that I've ever told this story before, but I was also very asthmatic growing up. I had severe asthma as a child. And I am a hundred percent convinced that yoga is what cured my asthma. Um, I I had so much fear around breathing and I'll never forget in my teacher training, um, my teacher, an incredible teacher, Jolie Cash, um, had a couple of different really intense practices during the teacher training, but one of them was a pranayama focused um, practice. So really deep, intense breathing and holding the breath for long periods of time and I panicked. I really started to to be terrified of what would happen if I held the breath for another second or two seconds. And once I got over the hump, the fear just released. And I felt this incredible um, just safety in knowing that I was capable of breathing. And so Uh, yoga had, it it was so incredible. And I know the power of yoga. I see 
so many lives that have been changed by, you know, the physical practice, the emotional, the mental practice, all the different layers. And it's a tremendous passion of mine to, to, you know, attract more people into that practice for whatever it is it can solve or heal or just bring joy to in their lives. Um, but I, I was teaching on the side of my sales and recruiting career and right. it was fun. It was kind of just a fun thing for me. I was certainly not trying to make a living doing it at that point. Um, and the studio owner that I was working for at the time kind of came up to me one day afterwards and was like, why are your classes so full? And why do you sell so many memberships? Like we make money when you teach. <laughs> well, but you had, and you had a sales background too, right? And I had a sales background. Yeah, so yeah. I, I just said, you know, it's pretty simple. I'm just not shy about asking them to yeah. buy their next class or to come to take my, I invited them to my next yeah, class. So, yeah, so I, and to me, that felt very intuitive, but I realized very quickly that that was not the way most teachers operate or, <laughs> and even the owners of studios were scared to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she asked me if I would start working the front desk and I said, you know, no, I don't have, I don't have time for that. Um, but why don't I just teach you how to sell? And so I, mm. I started working with her just on different verbiage she could use, the questions she could just ask the teachers to ask at the end of class. And it was kind of my first accidental foray into consulting with studio businesses, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I do, uh, you know, I do think the sales, I had marketing before owning the yoga studio. So I think when you have that skill set, it does make your job a lot easier as a studio owner um and absolutely. even if not then hiring the people to help like yourself and hiring the right. people to help train you and your staff how to do it is right amazing. and i yeah. i find that it was it was not just the fear that um you know they would say something that would make the client uncomfortable but it was also the knowledge around who that individual was to the studio. So there wasn't an intuitive way to find out like, oh, is this person a regular? Is this, what kind of classes do they go to? What teacher do they, you know, like the best? So when I would kind of look into their system, it, it really didn't give me much information on the individual. So that was one immediate, like, as I started building Walla thing I wanted to solve was I, I want context around who an, each individual yeah. is to a business. Yep. Um, but yeah, from there, I, I was, I eventually moved into running a large studio. Um, you did I that for a couple really, of years, right? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of years. And then I had my second baby and, you know, the 60 hours a week at the studio was not really working for my infant right. and my two-year-old and my uh, sanity. <laughs> um so I moved into doing some studio consulting again, sort of accidentally, a couple of studio owners reached out to me after I left my, my role. I was actually at yoga six. I was the, I ran the second yoga six location, um, and helped develop some of the sales processes that yeah. they, you know, used ultimately. And so I had a couple of studio owners reach out to me and just say, Hey, you know, like we're looking for some help. I just, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this or, I, I'm terrible at the system that we're using at the time, mind body. And so I just, I need help. And that's, that's how I started doing some business consulting. And ultimately that grew into studio solutions. Yeah. And I, so I, I, and I think you were closing that as I was kind of coming in. And mm -hmm. um, so, but I understand that you were really successful at that and you had a team and, yeah. um, and uh, you really did a good job of that. Yeah. Thank you. It was, it was interesting. I, um, I think I was one of the earlier ones to the game of like consulting for yeah. yoga and fitness yeah. studios. Yoga is a business. So, I know exactly. Yeah. And, and I think part of what inspired me was seeing not just how, how motivated the business owners were to, to be successful, but also how hungry they were for information about the, the, the industry as a whole, yeah. you know, like they don't have time to sit there and study what Peloton's next move is or what, you know, what exponential fitness, what move they're making right now. So somebody coming in with kind of insight into the, the yeah. bigger picture to give some coaching on what direction is going to make more sense or what consumers are being bombarded with from a marketing perspective, yeah, yeah. how can you stand out? So there was, there was just such a nice relationship there where I got to be an industry expert 
and yeah. also kind of hold the hand of these studio owners who just wanted to do what they were good at, you know? Yeah. And what were your biggest successful. lessons? What do you think you learned that the studio owners needed the most? Mm. Um, I think I listened on one of your other podcasts and just uh, the financial understanding of what numbers were important yeah. was yeah. so yeah. critical. Yeah. Um, it surprised me as well that people kind of went into business a little bit blind uh, when it came to that. Yeah. Point. And I think, and continue to sometimes go into it a little bit blind and not looking and not, not looking at how many declined credit cards there are and um, how many expiring offers are coming up and stuff like that. It, it kind of right. gets ignored. Um, yeah. so, so what did you learn, um, you know, coming into Walla, like how, how did, that come about because you must have mm -hmm. learned, you know, through the consulting process, what oh, yeah. people really needed and what they didn't need. Right. And, and I think what, what happened for me was I was just consistently underwhelmed by the support system studios had from a technology perspective. They were forced to, you know, work with five or six different products to just operate what should not be a really complex business, right? Like it, it's ultimately selling a service and having a few different ways to pay for that service. But it's it, it was so complex and so disjointed. Um, so I guess the the initial Walla conversation started um, in 2019. And my co-founder, Doug, who is the one who initially came to me about the concept for this modern studio management platform. So I can't take the credit for, for kind of, and you have two partners, right? Is that I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's the one that really had the cojones to say, let's do this. <laughs> That's um, a big thing. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. Uh, but we, we'd known each other for a while. He had actually hired me as an advisor, a consultant for his bit tech, um, startup, his last startup. And we had really hit it off. We respected each other. Um, so when he asked me about starting this software company, I actually said no twice. <laughs> he, he asked me, I said, no, he came back. I said, no. And then the third time, um, why I ultimately said yes, was that he brought up this concept of incorporating psychology and behavioral psychology into the platform itself. So we could take this, the scientific research, this, all of these kind of curated researchers find findings and weave it into something that would ultimately benefit the studio and the end consumer. So it's, it just felt like such a win-win and that excited me. I mean, yeah, it's a differentiator, right? It, yeah. It is one of our big differentiators yeah. and you know, I'm, I'm definitely money motivated. I am, like I said, in the beginning, I'm a competitor. I like winning, but at the end of the day, I really love knowing that I'm a part of something that is that's doing something big and that is going to improve the status quo. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that was, so let, the, you want to talk about that? The, the, yes. the yeah. So, um, so this morning I went on to um, your site and I took the psychology questions and mm -hmm. it was an interesting process. I actually found that it was, it felt, I couldn't quite tell, but it felt like some of the questions were repeated or re yep. repeated in a different way. And yep. it was probably, um, I think about 30 something questions, was it? Um, yeah. Very easy to answer. Yeah. It takes about two or three minutes. Yeah. I mean, and it's, and it's then I get, I get a result of what my personality type is. And I've been mm -hmm. familiar with this concept before because my friend who actually was my business coach when I had the studio, she also had a retail um, place and she had, she did something called true colors and Ooh. all of her staff got trained on true colors. Um, and again, it's uh, four buckets of types of people, right. personalities. And, and then she trained her staff on how to talk to those different types of, to Incredible. identify and talk to those. Yeah. So I've been familiar with the concept. So when you put this into yoga software, so the process is somebody signs up at your studio, at, so at a studio, mm -hmm. you get your confirmation emails as normal, but then there's this little extra bit saying, um, we've got a quiz to find out what type of personality you are and right. go through it and then you kind of get your results would you have a guess what i might be we don't know, know each other that well huh? are you a giver no i'm a doer yeah. doer oh me too okay. <laughs> <laughs> i love it it's funny most people that have taken the quiz so far we're starting to get data back in yeah. are 
givers or thinkers. And so the mavericks and the doers fall in the, the, the lower half. So way to go. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what makes you move is the question. And um, so, yeah, so that my, I came back as the doer. So, so I'm, I'm just, the theory is here that then the studio owner knows a little bit about their new customers, right? right? And then they can talk a little bit in a different language through marketing speak to the psychology of that different customer. So we have thinker, maverick, doer, and giver. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's not just speaking through marketing materials in, in a way that can be customized to the individual. It's actually encouraging your, your instructors, your front desk staff to, you know, we give you a lot of educational material to, um, you know, just small tweaks for somebody who might be a doer, a giver. Um, givers, for example, are people who really do need extrinsic motivation. Um, and they comprise about 40% of the population. So there's a good part of the population that really needs you to be high-fiving them, telling them they're doing a great job, nice work, way to show up today. I know it's not easy. That's so, how you would, that to, so to a giver, that's how you would speak to that person, the language? Yes, absolutely. And and doers are similar in that they really enjoy extrinsic motivation. They're, yeah. They like accomplishing things and being celebrated for that, but they don't need it quite as much as a giver does. Um and then thinkers and mavericks are kind of on the other end of the spectrum where to a thinker, it's actually kind of condescending to, to high five them in class and right. tell them great job right. and right. you're doing well. Um, so knowing that little bit is, is so critical to disarming the client, making them feel yeah. comfortable, making them feel like it's a space they want to step back in the doors of, which we all know how big of a hurdle that is for yeah. so many yeah. clients. Yeah. So our, our goal really is to just arm you with another tool, a really potentially powerful tool that will help you motivate your clients to step back in the door and ultimately build a habit with you. Um, along with the, the actual in, interaction in studio and, and being able to use that kind of tag in your marketing materials and send specific things to give. Yeah. So when someone comes into the studio in person and you, they're being checked in, can at a glance, the teacher or front desk person kind of see what type of person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. On our check-in screen, actually, we've got kind of a, a colored ring around each person's right. um, picture or their initials if they don't have a picture in there yet. And so actually there's like a hover state. If you ho hover over it with your, um, with your mouse, yeah. with the cursor, you can read a couple of quick, like loves extra or needs intrinsic, or I'm sorry, love needs extrinsic motivation, um, thrives on group workouts, that type of thing. So you can kind of get a quick glimpse into some of the things that will help motivate that person. So how would you speak to a thinker? A thinker. A yeah, thinker like loves, what, how would you communicate with a, with a thinker? Right. Thinkers love details. So okay. thinkers are the type of people that are going to want to know why, why are you asking me to do this? What, for example, when you're talking to them about different memberships, yeah. they're the type of person where you would say, you know, our recommendation to either achieve these results or whatever, you know, your specific studio yeah. might be doing is that you come three days a week. Um, here's what an ideal calendar would look like for that. Here's what the best price for that would be is this membership. So you dial it down to the details for that individual right, right, right. and that makes down. them feel safe. Um, yeah. in a class, for example, though, the thinker really likes to know the details of a pose. So there, there's going to be someone, um, hopefully telling them, you know, as you draw your shoulder back, that actually releases your neck right. muscles. So you've got a little more freedom and flexibility there. Um, it's, it's the more alignment cues and detail, yeah. the alignment cues, lifting so your it, arch and yeah. Yep, exactly. All yeah. of that. So it may even give you insight into what teachers that, that individual will yeah, thrive yeah, with, you know, yeah, because it's, yeah. and it's funny as I've started noticing and kind of seeing different people's personality types, I'm like, yep, that was, I'd always see her in so-and-so's class or she loved this guy. So you can, you can tell why people do what they do. Yeah. What about the Maverick? Oh, the Maverick does not like being told what to do. 
So <laughs> it's, it's really all about like inviting to try things, but never telling them. Right. And if you say to them, you should come three days a week. And this is like the best plan for you. They're going to be like, who are you to tell me what I need to do? <laughs> yeah. So, so this is where you hand them the class schedule and say, let me know if you have any questions. Right. Exactly. Yeah. They like to make their own decisions. Yeah. The, the one thing that Mavericks really love though, is having results tied to things that they enjoy in their lives. So it's interesting, like the, all of the research here suggests that Mavericks are people that really dig into hobbies. They dig into a specific, like maybe they're on their company softball team. Maybe they are a cyclist or road biker. So if you can um, tie results or benefits from whatever you're selling, whatever your service is yeah. to what their external hobbies are, that that's when you get the best buy-in. So it does take a little getting to know. Mavericks are the trickiest one yeah. of all yeah. of them. It takes a little bit of getting to know them because their initial reaction is resistance. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, with digging and just kind of asking some questions that, that give you a glimpse into what their interests are, that's where yeah. you can kind of get the hook. Yeah. I think that gives you a, a teacher to a tool for reading the room a little bit more, because I know, you know, after, you know, 20 years of teaching, you get to yeah. know, oh, leave that person alone. Just let them be in the corner right. there. They're just, they're going to be just fine. And mm -hmm. then this person you can joke around with and make fun with. Right. And, yeah. and so um, that gives us an extra tool, I think, for a teaching tool right. as well. And it can expedite the process because it takes quite a while to build relationships with clients. Yeah. You know, it yeah. might take a year before you know yeah. some of those things about a client, but just giving the little snippet of information about their, their personality type may help. Um, I mean, the other, the other piece of the puzzle is that we have curated a list or I'm sorry, a sequence of 16 emails, four months of emails weekly yeah, yeah. written by some very intelligent, very incredible um, behavioral psychologists and copywriters who have kind of woven the so words working together. together. That, I mean, that's an yeah. amazing team to come out with communication yes. for emails, right? Yeah. And it's pre-written. It's, you know, when you sign up for our, our marketing platform, it's actually in there. Literally, you just turn it on, you put your logos into the emails and your signature into the emails and you turn it on. And then your clients have an opportunity to really learn. It's, it's all about growth mindset and habit building. And yeah. we give suggestions on, you know, if this is interesting to you, here's this book nudge and here's what it talks about. And here are some of the things that you'll take away from that. And we've actually customized the email based on personality types. So there are four different emails and whatever your personality type will get your specific. So you have, so when you say you have 16, e do you have 16 emails for each type Times four. of customer? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of copywriting. I know. <laughs> it, it was a the fact that they're able to be turned on to is really nice because some mm -hmm. of the, some of the marketing campaigns out there are very hard language to understand for yeah. the average studio owner. I think that is right. not a marketing whiz. They just want it to work. Right. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, you know, we found that in general with studios is unless it is done for them from a marketing perspective, a lot of people just won't touch it. So yeah. It's a challenge, but I, I think the more we can customize for that business, the more we can yeah. have, you know, most of the boxes checked if we can just hold their hand through. Yeah. Is there <laughs> the do you have AI learning in this? Uh, no, not yet, but not it's yet. definitely something. Yeah, we're I can see that's definitely a, 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 a natural sort of way to go, I think, with this. Yeah, with, absolutely. With the There's so much getting. potential once yeah. you know you have this data. Yeah. Um, that was again, one of the more exciting things for me in thinking about, yeah. um, starting this company. So I'd love to talk about a few of the features. Um, you talk sure. about hybrid and virtual, uh, so virtual and in-person mm -hmm. being equal. Right. We, we kind of say they're, they're equal citizens in our yeah. software. Yeah. Um, you know, over the last year and a half, we actually had the kind of benefit of building during COVID. So we were able to see you know, what the initial reaction from studios and consumers was, um, you know, what waxed, what waned, what was really um, embraced. And then now that we're kind of coming out the other side, what's sticking? Um, and 
we wanted to make sure that we were supporting studios for whatever it was that their their customers were really grasping onto. Um, so when you build a class in Walla, you uh, have a direct integration with Zoom. And I've actually, in, in my sales calls recently, people are always like, wait, this is a real direct integration. It's not like copy and paste a code or a link yeah. or yeah. create all the, the Zoom meetings and then link them to your system. Yeah. No, we, we and actually create the meetings ourselves and you can start them directly from Walla. So it's super Yeah, easy. that's fantastic because I've had that experience where I've been able to, with uh, one of the softwares, I was able to book book their Zoom class, yeah. but it wouldn't delete the Zoom class. Uh, so, okay. it, you know, so it kind of defeat it. So it wasn't seamless, right? So right, right. to hear that that's built in is a really, really nice feature. It um, is. And so we have like, you build your live stream or in studio or both when you're creating a class. Um, and so you've got that one option. And we actually have um, pricing at the class level. So you can price your drop ins at, you know, different rates for live stream versus in person. So right. you can have your live stream be $10 and your in-person be 20 or yeah. um, one of the other big differentiators that we have is this credit model. Credit. Built okay. In I, that was on, next on my list was the, yeah. the, uh, the, the credit model. Cause a lot of the other yeah. companies have come up with it, but you've built it in from the get go. Get go. Yeah. yeah. And actually before I jump into that, we do have video on demand library as well. So you can build memberships that include your video on demand library or, a, you know, a specific video on demand only membership. So the clients don't need a separate login to access your library and it actually lives on your website. It's a widget that lives on your website. So you have the benefit of your clients spending time on your website. You know, they, they click play, they're there for 20, 30, 40 minutes. So Google loves that. <laughs> and so are the videos hosted with you guys? Yeah, they're hosted yeah. with us. So it's just all simple in one place. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, but back to the, the kind of pricing at the class level, mm -hmm. we found, and this is one of the learnings during COVID with live stream classes, with outdoor classes, with limited capacity, um, with studios coming up with really unique specialized programs yeah. where, you know, they're, they're different, just a different level, a different value. Um, we needed a way to normalize pricing across all of those different things where, a, a you know, a client wouldn't have to buy three different memberships to be taking, yeah, yeah. you know, the, the low capacity class and a live stream and whatever else might be on. Yeah. The, Can we do, let's clarify for the people that might not understand this. So this is, this is sure. basically, um, one, one in studio price might have a value more than a virtual class, for example. Right. Okay. So if somebody had an unlimited pass, the unlimited pass might now contain 50 credits. Let's yeah, well, so you could have your normal unlimited pass like you do, but rather than having um, maybe your eight class classes a month or your um, 10 class card, instead you'd have a hundred credit bundle that's good for a year yeah. or 40 credits a month. And those credits can be assigned um, or used towards any of the classes on the schedule. And it may mean that you price your hour and 15 classes a little bit more than your 45 minute or hour yeah. long classes, because yeah. your yeah. costs are obviously different for yeah. each one of those um, or your peak hour or your off peak hour. I remember having to build like a special class card so somebody could take $10 lunch classes in my old platform. You know, like it's yeah. it it needed to be simplified for the consumer's so that they feel like they're getting the value that something is really truly worth. And for the studio, so the studio can actually profit the way they should from a class. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, over the last year, there's been a lot of shift in mindset about the value of different classes, mm -hmm. um, especially over the last, and, you know, especially with um, some places have had to substantially increase the price of the, ca the, the class because they used to be able to get 30 people in and then now eight or 10. So that, that mat space becomes more valuable. Exactly. So this is a really simple way of assigning different value to different classes. Exactly. And so far, the clients that have been using it really love it. And in fact, yeah. um, I don't know if you saw yesterday, but Exponential launched, launched their X-Pass yesterday. I did not. And yeah, so we've known this is coming for a while. Exponential Fitness that owns 
Yoga Six, Club Pilates, Rumble, Cycle Bar, I think 10 brands at this point um, released their X Pass yesterday and they have the same system. So they basically have, they call it points, um, but they had to have, they had the same challenge, right? They had to normalize pricing across a bunch of yeah. different businesses that have very different values to their classes, different capacities, but they want to sell one pass that achieves that all, them all. Um, and it's, it's actually, I mean, I'll, I'll tease this out to you guys. It's kind of, um, the beginnings of what we'll be launching down the road, which is our hopscotch platform. Um, and hopscotch is kind of like an X pass for single owner studios. So okay. essentially you could pod with other studios that are using Walla, um, and potentially even studios that aren't uh, to share credits. So somebody could purchase a credit bundle from studio a, and those credits could be good for classes at studios B and C. So we're giving independent studios an opportunity to compete with the exponentials of the world. The, the, the past world is changing for sure. So that's Mm -hmm. super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're live now. We are. You're live now. You know, it was an idea when I spoke to you a year ago yeah. and I stumbled on the fact that you're alive because I was looking on something. I came across a San Diego website, looked at their schedule and it was powered by Walla. I'm like, oh, she's up. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden I saw you everywhere. And yeah. uh, and so how is it going? How is, you know, you, I see you're doing a lot of demos. You're doing a lot of touch bases mm-hmm. with potential clients. Yep. Yeah, I think it's important for from a startup perspective, the the owners, the people who are really involved in building the product to be involved in sales early on Um, that and I enjoy it. And it's my background. So it's never, never something I'm going to shy away from. Um, (laughs) I love it. But yes, we're live and it's gone well so far. I mean, we haven't done a mass marketing campaign. We have a lot of incoming interest right now. So we're kind of fielding that as our first level. We're we're getting our migration process down. Um, You know, honestly, one of the things we were most scared of going into launch was migration because it's a lot to take somebody's 10 year history on another platform and move it to another. Yeah. Um, But I have to say it is, it has become more of a benefit than a downside Um, studios. We call it the first step of it, the cleanse. And it has been so cathartic for studios to, we walk them through certain aspects of their previous platform that they can kind of clean out before moving over. And we move over the data that they want. We have it automated now. It is, I mean, the last two migrations we went through, we had zero customer um, from their clients, like their the studio's clients, zero customer questions come through on how to set up their accounts and how to log in. Wow, yeah. So we know we've gotten it to a point where it's streamlined. It's going to be um, a way to re-engage old yeah. clients that you potentially haven't connected with since COVID. Um, and, and yeah, the studios are loving it. It's, I mean, it's so much fun hearing their feedback right now. Um, well, yeah, sorry. Go so ahead. who do you, th- who do you think your ideal client is in the mar- marketplace? Cause you know, there's a lot of, okay, I'll be, I mean, I'm a, I'm a mind body certified business oh, consultant. You um, know, I was like one of the first. Of yeah, those. I do. So know, I know yeah. this platform. <laughs> you know that. So, but I, I always preface this with, you know, I am a fan of the product and the sort of the corporate side of things there, but um, I call myself a bit of a software whore because mm-hmm. <laughs> I do work with, I team up and work with a lot of different companies because I'm a right. big believer in finding the right fit for the right person. Um, right. and you know, different people, I, I mean, I've, I think you're meeting with one of my people this week that I think Thank is going to be a really good fit for you, for you. Yeah. And then other people, you know, I don't think they need as much sometimes, right. you know, there's, there's a lot of booking platforms out there that, that, that are exactly. simple, easy to use that are definitely for an independent, um, teacher, you know, might right. decide that that would be a fit for them. So where do you fit in this? Yeah, the world right now it's 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 shifted a lot, right? And there's a lot of people reprioritizing prices and what's important mm-hmm. to them, and um, yep. so a lot of people looking at shifting things this year. Correct, and and honestly, that's been such a nice thing is to have conversations with people who are 
not just open to, but interested in change, because typically that's a really challenging conversation to have. But if the past year and a half have taught us nothing, it's that we're capable of a lot. And, and things, systems that weren't working or things that were frustrating. Finally, it's, we're at a point where, where business owners have just said, you know, no, I, I actually do need to make a jump or I need to make a change. And what we've, to answer your question on kind of our ideal clients, um, an independent own, independently owned studio. So we're not built for franchises yet. Yep. Um, we will be releasing enterprise sometime in 2022 um, but it can be a single location a multi-location, but a single owner or, you know, group of owners. Um, we primarily right now have yoga bar Pilates, um, and kind of general group hit fitness yeah. studios as our clients, um, class-based businesses, enrollment-based businesses where you have, you know, you're selling a series of six weeks for 300 bucks and you meet every Tuesday, Thursday, um, teacher trainings. And we do actually have, uh, we have one client who's onboarding with us right now that is only virtual. So yep. we're okay with working with virtual only studios. Yep. Um, we're okay with working with in-person only studios, but we're, we're also built to support the hybrid that has somewhere in between. And that's who seems to be really, really feeling and, and experiencing the value in our product right now, because they, yep. they really can use everything. I'm super excited about this, Laura. I just, uh, again, I like your your take on the industry. It's a different approach. Um, I'm going to finish off um, oh <laughs> with three questions. So something okay. that most people don't know about you. Okay. Something people, most people don't know about me. I love to dance. I am really always up, whether it's like hippie dancing at a Dave Matthews concert, having a dance party with my kids downstairs. I mean, that's how I solve fights is I'm like, all right, music's going on dance party. I love it. <laughs> or, I mean, we have a kind of an inside joke with my husband's best friend that like, if there's a dance floor within 30 seconds, Laura's on it with my hands on my head, dancing everywhere. You get it going. You get the party going. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's something not everybody knows about me. I love it. Along with your belly laughing that you love too. Yes. Yes. Always a good thing. Uh, favorite biz app or website? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm a recent user of HubSpot okay. and HubSpot is blowing my mind oh, from a right? sales perspective, from a marketing perspective, we're using it internally at Walla. So I know it's not, it's not necessarily built for studios, so it's maybe not as applicable, but oh man, you can detail everything. But, but mostly for social no, so it's it's more of a sales. It's a CRM, so okay. it's it's client management, yep. it's lead management. It ties into social. Actually, it yeah. it kind of replaces like a Hootsuite or a, a later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it kind of follows people on your website, so it has a marketing engine attached oh, okay. to it. Yeah. So I'm kind of in like the depths of learning everything HubSpot right. can do and having my mind blown right now. <laughs> okay, I got to look into that a little bit more. Yeah, it's a um, lot of fun. Favorite personal Apple website? Where do, you, where do you hang out? Where do I hang out? Um, so I'm a Marco Polo person. Have you oh, heard of Marco Polo? Yes. Uh, Katie okay. Donzanti, I think, was talking about Okay. That. Yeah. So Marco Polo, I mean, single-handedly changed the relationship with my family. I'm one of six kids, so maybe that's something not everybody knows about me. And we live all over the country. And so, and most of us are parents or like very busy working lives. It's not easy to like stay in touch with your siblings yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. And so it's just this great app where you video yourself chatting, asking yeah. questions and you can have a group. And so whenever you have time, people can go on and respond and your kind of string of videos lives at the bottom. Uh, you okay. go back so I was trying to figure out what, how different it is, is it to um, WhatsApp? It's... It's different. It's like yeah. video voicemail. Yeah. And, it, but you can see it in a group with like the history there and you can uh, yeah. like have reactions. Like you can emoji things, you can draw on the screen. Uh, I got to play this the second yourself. time on this podcast that somebody's recommended it. So I yes. got to, no, and my family's all in England. So <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. My best friend's yeah. in Australia. And so that's, we very almost never can catch each other on the phone. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's our, our way we stay in touch. I, I sometimes like 
it's my social life. It's kind of embarrassing. I talk to my uh, phone more than real humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to I'm, I have to confess to TikTok now and then. I go down the rabbit hole on there and <laughs> and I I literally I, now I'm, do, I'm doing it once a week probably because I just can't. I just like it's that's like you good self control. You get sucked in and it's like oh my god, it's twelve o'clock at night. Like, I know. <laughs> it's like I I'm starting to dive into it a bit because we're looking at it for marketing purposes yes. and. I'm, I had received the sage wisdom about a year ago from somebody that was like, if you haven't started, don't start because you will lose, like you as a busy human being will lose hours of your life every yeah. day. Well, <laughs> you've got to be, you, you basically have to become a producer of content, like really producing good content on there to capture, keep people. Um, right. right. Captivated. But huge opportunity. So totally. So how do people find you sign up, demo, right. Right. Um, follow you, all of that good stuff, all of that good stuff. So our website is hello and so we W-A-L-L-A. have W A L L A. Yeah. W A L L A like a wallaby. That's where yeah. the name comes from, by the way. Um, Walla, hello, walla.com. And then um, you'll see on there, there are spots where you can book demos with us and, or just, you know, request information, join our list. Um, I'm happy to share my email address is Laura at hellowalla.com. And, you know, if you want to personally reach out to me, ask any questions, I'm accessible, I'm available. Um, And then lastly, on social, we're just kind of dipping our toe in starting on the social train. So Instagram is at Walla Software. And same with Facebook. So yeah, you'll probably find more on Instagram. It's honestly more than anything, we've been kind of highlighting our clients lately because they're just yeah. so amazing. Well, like, and that honestly, that is the I, I said that on the last podcast that it's the 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 relationships is the profit builder. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's community and relationships is absolutely what builds a business, I believe. For sure. And yeah. we've, we've been really intentional about, about connecting our clients with each other and, yeah. you know, having a group that they can talk to each other in Facebook right now. I'm, I'm such a firm believer in being surrounded by other people who are going through the same thing you're going through and finding success together. So it's, it's been a really fun process. Yeah. I wish you all the best of success, Laura. I think you're amazing. I think you bring a lot to the table. I think it's nice to see something fresh in this industry happening. Um, And uh, I wish you the best of luck and thank you for your time. Oh, awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. This is Yoga Biz Camp. This is my new by invite only dedicated space to support yoga businesses. It's like Facebook, but without all the noise and clutter. Here you will find all my resources, including free monthly fireside chat, business question and answer time with myself, and along with all of my different communities from studios to solos to the inner circle, Here you'll find guest interviews with leaders in our industry and as well as all of my free resources is all in one dedicated space. If you're ready to become the next Yoga Beers champ and get private invite into my free community support space, go to yogabeerscamp.com, click on Yoga Beers Camp and I will see you on the inside. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on our podcast. It really helps us out a lot. Thanks a million.